Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolov, and right now, this is not where we left off last time. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just be completely honest with you guys. I had to use COTS commands for a couple things here. So, you know, last time we started with the foot in the door. Well, I retried it with the slam the door in the faces, because this one gives you a moderate bell. And I'm thinking, you know what, let's go a little crazy here. Let's try to slam the door in the face. We're not going to get any of the other half of the NPP to vote for us anyways. So I tried to go down this entire way. Did a refining the bill, did a most pressing issue, did one last push, did a civil rights act. And even though we had 35 center NPP senators, and we had 20 Republicans there too, which we only needed 15 out of the 20 because we have, uh, we would have a 50 Senate, senator, you know, lead, you could say, with the vice president being the tiebreaker. <clears throat> Still couldn't pass it. So that kind of irked me. So I went back. And redid the elections to get RFK once again. But I used console commands to do so. But we only got one more senator. Even with console commands. I only got one more center NPP. Um, yeah. We have two less Republicans. We have a few more of uh, the individuals on the further right of the spectrum. But yeah. This is, using using console commands. We only got one more center. So, But I did use kind of the console commands to do dealing with the, the far right as well. So I called in one or two of these. So like straight up honest here. Like, I use Collins commands, it is what it is. And I did say I want to try something different, because I did this one last time, I believe. So let's actually march straight forward, which I don't understand how this works, especially since these guys aren't going to vote for us with, uh, the far right's not going to vote for us, regardless, but, uh, okay, anyways. The situation we found ourselves in is in dire and bleak. Our photo in Congress remains tenuous and prone to faltering, and her words fall on the deaf ears of more Americans than comfortable. As pressure mounts both within and without the NPP for President Kennedy to pass the Civil Rights Act, whether to succeed or fail, negotiating with Republican Democrats become an increasingly attractive option. But compromise entails sacrificing principle for convenience. For a party long defined by its commitment to its own agenda, the former something it cannot afford. Let the RD stew in their own hypocrisy. The NPP can march forward to the facility the future simply with the support of its ranks and integrity of its congressmen and probably women but i'll be honest i spent like two to three hours trying to figure this out how to make try to make this work as much as possible it just it's a little buggy the you know just in general is buggy i've heard at the time it's recording the gold water environment stuff is like it's buggy as well so i i wish i'd have these cost commands but for because i've done this like two, for quite a while and i've played rfk before i just figured you know what screw we'll just use cost commands for this one the glorious bill on the president's desk lays the Civil Rights Act, unblemished by compromise, f fastidiously maintained by men of power and principle in equal measure. It stays true to the words and enshrines, offering wide-ranging guarantees to all Americans, irrespective of race, faith, sex, and creed. Desegregation in both pu public and uh, private establishments, workforce quotas, thus abolishment of poll taxes and literacy tests, duly enforced by the federal government. Despite protestations against forcing the act through without sufficient discussion, echoing both aisles of Congress, President Kennedy could not have asked for a better bill. Getting the votes to ensure its passage is still an obstacle to hurdle, however, and whether or not he can ever ink his signature on the first page remains to be seen. Also, like, it's, yeah, South Africa is still South Africa. Um, who's leading here? It was Borman. So now, instead of Goring, we have Borman. So it's actually a little bit more engaging, I guess, with Germany. Slightly more, just because, you know, Borman actually does stuff, and well, Goring just gets cooed every single time, so... I apologize for that, but just been I spent so much time off screen trying to figure things out and just I think the USA I think pretty much almost every nation, most nations in TNO could use a little bit of a refinement, I guess we could say. Just a refinement. Not much, but a refinement. Because even using cons commands, we only got one more center. Huh. I really try to screw up as Nixon, but oh well. Uh, let's continue with uh Fighting Tyranny since seventeen seventy six. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Because I've read this like three or four times. I did this with obviously RFK. I did this with George Wallace. I don't think I get that tree when I play as LBJ, but if, you can still read it if you really want to. And I bet we have some comments to go through. We got some coffee to sip on. And overall, not too bad. The Civil Rights Conundrum, one of the biggest obstacles remaining on the way to a stronger, freer, fairer union, as a continued practice of segregation in the South. And uh, civil rights has been one of the most divisive issues in American discourse this century, and it's time to finally put it to, to rest by passing a strong act to end the practice once and for all. Our supermajority in Congress means President Kennedy will face no challenge there, giving us a lot of freedom to decide on the final contents of the Civil Rights Act. While Congress won't pose any difficulties, however, our own party might prove trickier to handle. The far right wing is already concerned about their waning influence, and they're firmly against civil rights. We cannot let them stop us from passing a strong bill, of course, but we might want to show a modicum of restraint in how fast and hard we push desegregation. 
I still command a lot of influence in the southern states, which influence which. If we push them too hard, we might turn against our administration. We have three drafts for consideration, all of them end the practice of segregation, ban Jim Crow laws, and prohibit discrimination of Americans on the basis of color. The first of the drafts contains no further provisions. The second aims to also empower the disenfranchised by mandating equal representation in state senates and positions and equal funding for schools. The third and most radical of the drafts aims to also counter the effect of, of segregation by mandating action policies for political offices, all official institutions, university admissions, and officer ranks in the military. All three options will surely anger the far right, but the more radical drafts are sure to cause a much stronger reaction. How far shall we go? And segregation, empower the disenfranchised, and discrimination for good. We didn't need political power, right? We don't need it here. As long as we get the CIA and the FBI and the NSA doing all sorts of good stuff, we don't need any extra help, right? Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright, we can close out of that one until we can get some more PP from that stuff. And that's one we don't really need to see either, so. Very good. And the Indonesian War should start relatively soon, as well as the Battle for Italy. Um, like I said, I'd play this off-screen, so... Uh, I kind of already know what's going to happen, but then again, if you seen this channel at all, you know what's good, pretty much what's going to happen whenever we play as America. There we go, the Indonesian War. Yay, yay. Well, not yay for the Indonesians, but hey, it is what it is. Alright, so after this one, we can still pass civil rights, but, um, it's only seven days, why not? An act to enforce the constitutional right to vote to confer jurisdiction upon the district courts of the United States of America to provide injunction relief against discrimination and public accommodations to authorize the Attorney General to institute suits to protect constitutional rights in public facilities and public education to extend the Commission on Civil Rights to prevent discrimination in federally assisted programs to establish a Commission on Equal Employment uh, equal employment Opportunity and Other Opportunities and Purposes. The title is draw legal lease, but do not be fooled by its outward appearance. The Civil Rights Act heralds the greatest flowering of American political freedom since so the Bill of Rights, searing into the country's books of law, the rights withheld to select citizens in many of its states. Millions of Americans will see their fortunes improved at last, breathe true freedom at last, and witness jubilo at last. Should this act pass the baptism of Congress, the fate of millions now hang in the balance, as do the sacrifices we have made to reach this point. Pray that our lawmakers will listen to their conscience and make the right choice. Hmm. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. I know I've read that one before. And I've read a lot of these before, but this one's like just kind of... I've done it too many times, so. At least the NPP fights for America. And the burning jungle. Indonesia is aflame. What is the situation? People are dying there. What else do you need to know? This one's what gives us some PP. Oh, nice. The final vote. The vote on the Civil Rights Act has not been days, weeks, or months in the making. It has not been years, even decades in the making. This, is, this Civil Rights Act has been generations coming. It's been coming since the first slave ship landed on the shores of Virginia. This is a bill that has been sung on the plantations and in the colored-only meeting halls. This is the bill that rolled the Underground Railroad. It's a bill that fought and died at Gettysburg, waving the banner of the Union and of ab abolitionism. This is a bill that marched with Martin Luther King and his quarter million demanding freedom and equality under American law. We stand now on the precipice of a new era of American history. This new era will surely be one of true American patriotism, a nation coming together to celebrate a commitment to freedom, equality, and brotherhood. Because are we all not Americans? Are we not all deserving of the same opportunities and rights? If we pass this act, well, one thing that we'll never have in Germania, we will have a nation united and working tirelessly towards a true free democracy. And we promise you this, democracy will always win in the end. Now, we just have to hope that the Senate agrees. It only takes 51 years. Sunrise in Birmingham. Oh, that was really fast. Holy crap. The sun rose over the house of a young black family in Birmingham. The only son had taken the radio to his room the night previous, and accidentally left it on. From it came the voice of RFK, my fellow Americans. I come to you today to speak to you of a new era of Americanism. Earlier today, the U.S. Senate voted narrowly to pass the Civil Rights Act, and now it's sitting here right on my desk, ready for me to sign. I wanted to take the time to explain to you what this new act would do after I've signed it. This act will secure a solid equal chance for Americans, regardless of race, color, or creed. We finally shoved Jim Crow with his one foot in the grave entirely into said grave, and we're not stopping here. The radio woke the boy up from his fitful sleep. He jolted from his dream of white hoods and burning crosses into his Birmingham bedroom. The golden sun was flowing through the blinds in his window, filling his room with a bright yellow hue. A sleepy, dark-skinned hand reached to turn that radio dial in 1963. I stood in this very same spot to tell you all that I had a dream. A dream of an America that I knew was soon to come. An America where we all were Americans, not white Americans or black Americans. I stand here today to tell you that we're ever closer to that dream. Even now, President Kennedy is signing into law the Civil Rights Act, the very act that will build the foundation for the America of which I dream. Again, that sleepy hand reached into 
reached out and turned the dial. And that was a change is going to come by Sam Cook. Now, for the weather. With the beautiful sunrise over Birmingham, you can expect warm sunny days ahead. Expect a high of oh, that sleepy hand reached dial one more time. This time to turn it off. The boy pulled on his shoes, stood up and went outside. He wanted to look at the sunrise. We did it all for you. So we replaced American despair with American malaise. Our Kelly will be seen more as a liberal candidate. Increase the status of civil rights. We have minority protections. We have support disenfranchised. And we also have affirmative action. We lose so much political power. Holy crud. We get more civilian, which is nice. Pick up the red phone. Given that both of us are nuclear powers, there stands the reason that we must tread carefully when interfering with the co-prosperity sphere. Well, Japan seems to be controlled by level-headed men. We still must be careful to tell the fine line between isolationism and being mavericks. We'll place a call to the Japanese on the red telephone. We'll assure them that we have no interest in sending Japanese boys home with American bullets in them, yet our commitment to dem democratic movements around the world brings us a moral obligation to support those who fight for freedom in, in, in Indonesia, reminding them of Indonesia's technical independence and sovereignty. We'll caution them against launching intervention into the East Indies and remind them that threatening the freedom of a sovereign people may have dire consequences, but Indonesia flame. Our analysis predictions regarding the East Indies have proven cr frightfully accurate. Sukarno's attempt at using martial law to solve the crisis with a PKI has been a dismal failure. After years of frustration with his despotic administration, Liberal Democrat Mohamed Hatta has risen up against Sukarno under the banner of Free Indonesia. While Sukarno may have stressed that everything is under control, Hatta is moving swiftly to seize the country, having already taken large swaths of Ake, Borneo, and Papua. This could be a critical opportunity for the U.S. to gain a new ally against Japanese domination of Asia as long as we act quickly. The jungle burns in a supermarket in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 2.04 a.m. Joe Smith! Found a little enjoyment in his menial night job stocking shelves at Karn's Quality Foods, but if he wanted to be the first in his family to attend college, he'd need more than just a few dollarinos to his name. Putting every single penny in the bank, he scrimped and he saved, spending weekends watching the tube instead of taking tricks to the movies and with his buddies. The only thing keeping him going sleepless nights after sleepless night were his dreams of someday throwing his academic cap in the air. Shelving cereal boxes are not up on autopilot. Joe found himself remembering the news report he caught on CBS the previous weekend. Apparently, President Kennedy had given a speech on the importance of education for America's youth and expressed support for working class people going to college. Joe had been surprised to hear that after years of his parents telling him that politicians didn't care about people like him. Maybe the president was just trying to garner votes, but did his intention really matter so long as he kept his word? Finishing his cereal, Joe got to work on coffee and tea. Was it possible that the president really cared about the people like him? Joe had been too young to vote in 64, but even if he had been old enough, his family's lack of faith in the establishment, formed after generations of alienation and disenfranchisement, would have likely kept him from polling booth. Regardless, he'd heard a lot about President Kennedy and his policies on TV, and found himself agreeing with a lot of it. He hoped that he didn't make him a liberal. Dad wouldn't like that. Stacking cans of powdered milk, Joe pictured himself receiving a scholarship. Perhaps this time he was registered to vote? The wise man knows not to mess with Tamani, Tamani Hall. Tamani. Yeah, well, just get used to being disappointed by politicians. That's just life for you. Doesn't matter who they are. They're all disappointing in the end. Anyways, um, oh, I don't. We don't need to press L here. We need to press K because I've been training these Marines to get more army XP. I'm actually going to send the Marines over. I've already, as you saw, like dealt with Africa. So yeah, send the Marines over. Oh, and send some planes over too. 160 is not too bad. So let's come over here. Um, where did those extra planes go? Well, we got you. Head on over, boys. See what you can do. No, they're not down there. Um, cast fighters. Let's go with you. And we can only go up to 60, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spend and don't cut any more for now because we want those Marines to do well. Obviously, I want to send, like, helicopters, but I actually deleted my helicopter divisions because they're just so weak. Like, they're not reinforcing, so we're going to make some more. We'll see what happens, but that's why I sent the Marines. Conversations. Or, actually, you know what? If you want to about Saturday mornings with Tom and Jerry, please go right ahead. Perfection to in the little screen. And if you want to read about conversations from the little street, or from the street, Indonesia calls. I've read this, like, two or three times already, so. If you want to read that, please go ahead. Always send up to tyranny. How many more will we send to die? Well, always send up to tyranny. Don't ask how many sons of America are going to have to die, though. Just don't ask. Don't, don't ask. Don't tell. Policy will probably repeal later on, but you know, whatever. And also, we're done with the CIA stuff. I don't, I don't remember. I, 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 like I said, I played this for like two or three times off screen already, so I'm not exactly sure where we're at. Alright, and now we can do the charity for all, which I kind of want to do. Build a better safety net. We get some low unemployment subsidies, the rights of workers, federal minimum wage, um, implementing this stuff, campaign for support. Uh, sit down with Chavez. The war on poverty. Federal food banks. You need to get federal food banks to more political power, monthly population stability. Poverty will increase. Or it'll get better, actually. The ports of the poor. 
Oh, I want to do all stuff. Um, we do root of the issue. The Dixie Crafts will trust us less if we go through with this. Um, the OFM grows a little more unified. The road towards justice. You know what? We're doing this one. The civil rights act is filed to become law of the land, and congressmen and laymen alike celebrate their victory. Despite bellicose rhetoric tinged with southern twang aimed at the righteousness of our cause, millions of dollars spent on defaming and harassing our leader figures and humble rank and file, and colorful broadcasts meant to turn the American public against us, despite aggressive assaults from crank cantacurus, hateful racists, 20 million Americans could now truly exercise the right which they, we take granted for. But the struggle for true equality is yet to be won. Obstacles remain for the colored man hurdle, one which has had centuries to entrench themselves into our American system, invisible or otherwise. They pervade or corrupt the very institutions which proclaim to deliver liberty and justice for all. For now, let us rev revel in this seminal moment in America's history. Let's take care, however, not to grow complacent on our laurels lest we see our current success undone. So now, we road towards justice. Social justice isn't easy, and President Kennedy is made and only will make more enemies in his latest campaign. So... Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's totally not going to end up like his brother right now. The fight against poverty. Oh, we get some... We need more money. Because we can do this. Poverty rate will slowly begin to improve. Oh. Oh. I, we got to get that one. Campaign where we haven't. If you want to read about these, please go ahead. Like, you can pause the game if you really want to. But Oh, the RDs will look a little better. Oh, but I don't want the RDs to look any better. I will lose money, which is fine. The center grows more popular. That actually... Ooh, campaign where we have it. We need a lot of money. Um, this one, let's see. Academic base will improve as well. And the fight for workers. Actually, you know what? If we can do campaign where we haven't, as well as this one, the RDs will look a little better. That's not too... bad. Mm. All right. Well, all right. So, really, the thing is, I want to keep building stuff, but we need money. Um... There we go. I don't like cutting down construction spending, but look how well we're doing already. Like, we're already boosting up civilian budgets anyways, and we're going to be running out of stuff very soon anyways, so. The front line, send more advisors. I'd love to do that, but I don't want to send... Uh, I think with a single Marine Division, we should be okay, right? The domestic support is fine. Yeah, let's definitely start working on some of this stuff. Screw Italy. I want to make America better. Um... We haven't finished stuff either, which is fine. Oh, okay, so you're here. And these marines are actually pretty darn good already. Uh, just give me whoever has the most attack. There you go, beach. Hope we can win doing it like this. Yeah. I mean, I, we spent a lot of time in Africa, so we actually made these guys 20 combat with already, so which is pretty nice. Obviously, I prefer 40 combat with, but whatever. My goal is just beat the crap out of them as fast and as hard as possible. Can't actually send anyone, anyone else yet. Yeah, we can. Okay, that's good. Um, I would like to send tanks. Tanks are so good for armor. But at the same time, armor in the jungles sounds like an extraordinarily bad idea. And since we have rivers and stuff like that, I think the Marines would be more accustomed to fighting this way. So. They weaken themselves already. The more damage you do, the less they can do against us, so. Ooh, nothing yet here, okay. CIA, 57. Just keep doing this for a little bit more. I do apologize that I use Consul Commands. I hate using Consul Commands. I try to keep my runs as clean as possible, but like, sometimes it just, it just, you just can't do it. Alright. Injustice everywhere is a, th a threat to justice everywhere. Anywhere to everywhere. Justice prospers where rightly guided laws are duly enforced and adhered to by all. Conversely, improperly applied laws which liberate it are as dangerous as properly applied laws which oppress. For the former demonstrates the government's inca incapacity to dispense justice wherever needed. Justice requires cooperation between both intent and practice to deprive one of the other and the tyrants blossom where good men ought. Thus, it cannot be gainsaid that every injustice heard to have occurred in the supposed land of freedom is a threat to every the very freedoms enshrined as law, and just where they could, where they should cultivate. The WRF is one, very good, very good for you guys. I just want a little bit, a few dollars, just a few dollars here. That's all I'm asking. Towards the root of the issue, Pres today, President RFK spoke to the nation about the Civil Rights Act that had been instrumental in passing. Upon walking to the podium on the stage of the Capitol building, he was applauded by the supporters in the and in the audience. And once the applause had stopped, he began a speech. My fellow Americans. We have all uni unified, or united, around the concept of freedom in a way I could never have thought possible. The passage of the Civil Rights Act is an extraordinary step for all, but us, for all of us, but today our struggles are not over. While the equality we strive for has been now codified, we must maintain our commitment to the downtrend across America and refuse to withdraw into complacency, unfortunately. We must still come to terms with the root of the issue across the country. The remnants of prejudice continue to fester, many unabated by the legislation we have passed. While the blatant and ugly efforts of states to desegregate, or to segregate the races of America have been dashed, the echoes from earlier times have nonetheless persisted. Too many of these institutions are a fact of life, for good or ill, but our nation was not founded on the principles espoused by America's founders. I call on all citizens of the U.S. today to look at ourselves and our society critically, and 
question some of the things we take granted for. The un-American attitudes of racist groups have lost their stranglehold on politics, but that does not mean they have been vanquished for good. A confronted that these uncomfortable aspects will not com be comfortable or enjoyable, but it's something we must not we must do as a nation if we ever plan to move forward. Only through examination can we make our country safe and an inviting place for all Americans. Thank you all. We will persevere. As long as you're not stepping on anyone's freedoms. Then again, if they're stepping on other people's freedoms, then that's definitely something up for debate. And we'll see how far we can get with the civil rights, my friends. We, we kind of already did, but we're not obviously done yet. Hmm. That'll be awful. This will be awful too. Even more attacks. Sign us up. All right. What are we gonna do next? We, go. we don't have any choppers, but we could try that. Something like that, maybe. My goal is just beat the living crap out of them all. You know what? Screw it. We're gonna spend more here. Spend more. That's fine. Um, the front lines, political landscape, domestic situation. Actually, can we expand uh, NPP? No. They're working together. Okay for now. They probably really don't like that we uh, expanded civil rights, but whatever. Um, since we're here, it says, like, uh, these guys are already, oh, never mind, they're not too many combo with. My bad. I thought I already made up too many combo with. Oh, well. That's, like I said, oh, uh, actually, you guys, um, I've been doing this for, like, a couple hours, so I'm not even sure what I've done yet anymore. Cool, so after this one, none of this stuff is really going to give us more social improvement probably immediately. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it with Charity for All. America is by far the wealthiest, most prosperous free nation on the planet. While Germany continues to flounder, desperately trying to preserve its empire of evil, and Japan perpetually stamps a boot down upon its oppressed peoples, we continue to stand tall as a beacon of liberty and prosperity. And yet there are still pockets of people within a nation without the means to live. They struggle to put food on the table. They've been struggling to find legal counsel when they've been wronged. They live in the most squalid and dire conditions imaginable, and allowing this to happen to our own people. How can we call ourselves any better than the fascists? Robert Kennedy intends to rectify the situation with immediate effect, with a range of measures aimed at granting aid and welfare to the most vulnerable. Good. Uh oh. Hello. Excuse me. There we go. Offer some Rome. If you want to build this, please go ahead. Give me the ambassador. We're gonna spend a lot of people getting Rome on our side. We'll see what happens. All I want you to do is go right there. Just go right there and hang out. Oh. Nice. That's very good, actually. That's very, very, very good. So all that stuff is done. Can we get better arty yet? No. Soon, but no. Any better marines? Yes-ish, sort of. Let's go back over here and keep making more civvies. Civvies are the lifeblood of our economy. For now, until a two-box theory comes out, which is never going to come out of the town of this recording. Um, yeah, if it ever does come out, I'll be a little surprised. Uh, look at all that infrastructure we made. Uh, good job, RFK. Mr. Infrastructure. So now they're, really, you know, whacking is kind of hard, which is fine. I want to see them, you know, lose more, 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 more. News from Tokyo, if you want to about that, please go ahead. Um, honestly, just stay, both of you stay there. Let that, oh, hello. Oh, yeah, cool. With charity for all, my friends. With charity for all. Oh, here we go. Okay, take, talk with the hardliners. Because further divided... E Southern Fears, we're not doing that one. Campaign for civil rights, we could. Campaign with walls would be a lot cool, but chat with Goldwater. I like that one, but that's cool. So we can't do this one yet because we need more money. God dang it. Why is money so hard to guy guy to get? Ah, we want something. Hmm. Ah. We're so close. We're so close. Ah. After that one, turn the nation. Robert Kennedy is not content to be seen as yet another career politician sitting in an ivory tower. He needs the people to know that he truly cares for them and wants to understand the issues that they really face to this end. The president's plan to embark on a grand tour across the whole of the U.S., where he'll visit numerous communities and people from all walks of life. He will use this opportunity to speak directly to the American people and get a view from the ground of the problems affecting their everyday life. This should hopefully foster a better relationship between the office of the president and the people that the office dedicates itself to serving. It almost looks like we are, like, um... Getting, we're completely surrounded, but we're not, so. There you go, that's good. Sins of the Father. Exposed to the foibles of Washington from a young age, Robert Kennedy came to realize early in life that America is a land of contradictions. Many of his father's fellow senators prof profess to value freedom and liberty above all, while simultaneously denying the fundamental rights of a great many of their own citizens for no other reason than the color of their skin. The Civil Rights Act is a step in the right direction to right the wrongs of his forebears, but compared to the many injustices plaguing America, it seems but a drop in a vast, vast basin. Sitting in the Oval Office, nursing a tumbler of scotch, the President wonders why he doesn't feel any sense of accomplishment. He changed the lives of millions, and yet it felt like he'd hardly done anything at all. 
So many terrible things that were still happening across America. School, school segregation, redlining, FBI harassment. It all seemed like the list kept going on and on. An unsaleable mountain of obstacles. Kenny felt the resoluteness rising in him, buoying up even as he felt like he was sinking. He was a president now, and he had the power, the power to do whatever was right. I can't rest, he thought, as he drowned the scotch, until I get it all done, even if it kills me. Whew, don't say that, man. The wicked shall have no rest. Oh, boy. That's very bad if we lose there, so we're going to immediately come here. Immediately. Tokyo Saturn, if you wonder about that, was good. Where's the ambassador? I don't know. Don't ask me. I love to chat with Goldwater, but we got other things to do right now. One more enemy division dead is another enemy division that could save our lives. Um, actually, it's the next one we should really do. Get right here. Go right here and cut two, th two of these divisions off. That'll be good. Actually, just go both go right here right now. That's fine. There you go, son. Oh, battle for Italy. Okay, so we're going to probably spend way too much PP doing this. Um, as much as I want to do it. Oh, I want to do this stuff, though. Oh, we have money, finally. We actually have money. Look at that. Oh, we don't have that much money, but we have some. Uh -huh. Viper schools. I want to get all this stuff done, man. Um, we're going to spend way too much PP here. There you go. Um, we'll see what happens. Let's see. I want to fight against poverty. I've got to fight against poverty. That's fine with me. The next one we'll do is the center MPP grows more popular. We'll do that one next. I promise you that one. Communist reunify Kazakhstan. All right, good, good job, uh, guys. All right, so now we can do this one too. Um, I don't want to invest anymore. The MPP MPP's popularity decreases a bit. I don't want to do that one yet. So good. Two more divisions going to go bye bye. All that matters is that we kill the divisions off. Oh, uh, you guys hold. Actually, come back down here. Actually, just go right here. Any damage we do, like I said, is damage worth doing. Go right here. Nice. All right, tour of the nation. Oh, hello. Hello. You guys actually go... Yeah? We're definitely trying to get more army XP here. After tour of the nation. A little war on poverty. Uh... Bob is done turning the nation. The president has returned from his tour across the nation. While made for good PR opportunities, he's disquieted by the sheer level of poverty he encountered in some of the most destitute parts of America. That we can claim to be a superpower while our own citizens endure such grueling hardships is appalling. As long as there is plenty, poverty is evil. And the president will make absolutely sure that his office will dedicate itself to the eradication of poverty in our great country. Would you say you're trying to, you know, declare a war on poverty, maybe? That's why we're always spending more on for civilian spending because it gives us more PP. So, mm, here's what we're gonna do. Come over here. There you go. Uh, and how are you guys doing too? There you go. Actually, can we throw? Oh, we can throw in a few more planes. That's actually really good. There's not a lot more planes, but we'll take it. If possible. Um. Actually, let's come over here. We do, we do, like, I don't uh, tell you correctly, but we do have uh, some more uh, comments to go through. Fighter. Oh, on the Faroe Islands, okay, goodbye. But yeah, we have some comments to go through. I just want to make sure we can get through this war first, and then we'll talk about the comments. There you go. Should do relatively okay down there. And then go up there. Oh, there goes Ireland. Look at all those divisions we can circle and kill off, probably. Oh, that'd be so good. Please, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, nice. Oh, no, yes, no, 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 okay. Hold, because I don't want to lose this tile here. All right, so you're both attacking now. Somewhere beyond the sea, the president of the U.S. Like your own nation so many years ago, Indonesia is locked uh, uh, between a struggle between two great historical forces, liberty and tyranny. We're fighting in the hopes that one day our children will enjoy a country where they can speak their minds without censorship, where they may vote in fair elections to decide their own government, where they can enjoy freedom and pursue happiness. This dream is not yet realized, however. <clears throat> Our revolution to dispose the autocrats of Karno is anything but assured in his victory. Our brave soldiers fought and down the jungles for a future they will not see. Their sacrifice must not be in vain. We're requesting guns be direct. Guns will win the war. Guns will secure liberty for our people. Guns will defeat Sakarno and reveal the growing cracks in the Japanese Empire. If you will not assist us for the good of Indonesia, assist us for the ills of Japan. They gotta manage on their own. Screw it, we're gonna force the attack. We're gonna win here now. Hmm. So let's go to the C one, so the center grows a little more uh, better, so. Um, where are we for poverty? Ah, it's going up finally, yay! Yeah, kill them off. There you go, civilian budget boost, keep spending that, baby. Whoa, whoa, 15! Ooh, that's a lot of money! 
Ah, uh, I can't do both of these. I can't do this and do Italy at the same time. God dang it. <clears throat> I want to do both. As long as I don't do too much, RFK is not going to get killed off, so... We have a little bit of time. I hate... That's all I can say is... I just want some Italian booty with us. The journey of a thousand miles. Robert Kennedy sat in his Oval Office. Humphrey... Uh, Hubert Humphrey, and James Rowley, Secretary, Secret Service Director, across from him. So, everything all set? Yes, Mr. President, replied Rowley. All your bags and necessary items are aboard Air Force One, and everything is secured for a smooth running of things while you're on the campaign. Excellent, said Robert Kennedy. Setting up from the Resolute Desk, now is just a decision of where to start. Wait, said Humphrey. I thought we had agreed upon Boston for a first destination. The short support for a stronghold of ours. What's changed? Kennedy scratched his chin. Well, uh, you see, I'm not so sure that's the best course of action right now. I think we need to focus more on party unity by traveling to more conservative strongholds. Our supporters in Boston aren't going anywhere. I think Maine. Humphrey side. If it's your call, Bob, but everything's already set up for Boston. If you're the boss, but I still think that would be the best choice. Kennedy looked out the window over the White House lawn. It was a terrifically beautiful day. One good for flying, he supposed. It had been out, been set on Maine, but no, he wasn't so sure where to fly to. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to Boston. Boston first, because that's where our you know people have been. You know, that's where our people are at. You know, um, mandatory naval training. Some stuff is not bad. Is there any way to get more uh, political power? Oh, we could use that immediately. Screw, we're going to rally the Australians? Yeah. Nixon, coward that he was, envisioned a policy of containment of Japanese imperialism. He would have used Australia Aust yeah, as a forward operating base for the U.S. troops to provide an assistant role to Hatta, but we in the MPP know that the OFN ain't free. The Aussies ain't here to be a mere base of operations. They're going to be into the breach by our side. We'll put a call out to the Aussies and tell them to ready their men for intervention in Indonesia. We'll get them fired up and ready to run through the jungle. We'll also send them some equipment, too, in case, they, of course, they need it. The Boston speech. Boston was a wonderful city for the president to visit. He was greeted by large cheering crowds crammed along the narrow colonial era streets as his motorcade paraded down the Freedom Trail. Finally standing before thousands of the Boston Common, they could tell this place loved him. Waving flags and carrying signs, they cheered for him when he stepped off on the stage and only quieting to hear him speak. Bostonians, how great it is to return to the city of my birth. You know, I remember going up on the outskirts of the city in Brookline, all them terrible signs that they used to have outside businesses, stores, everything. Do you remember what they said, people of Boston? No colors allowed or whites only. Traveling down the Freedom Trail today, though, I saw some, no such signs. Did you? I doubt it, because the city of Boston is free, welcoming, undyingly progressive. I want to remind you that that is what progressives of America stand for. This is what we fight for, and more than that, it'll be what we achieve. Desegregation across America. That's what we want, and that is what we'll get. But the good fight, Boston, stay progressive. With that, the president stepped down off the podium to let the mayor of the city give his slower, more sober speech. After a few hours of pleasantries and intermixed uh, comments by Kennedy, Humphrey, then the mayor, it was time to head back. Stepping off the platform, Vice President Humphrey turned to Kennedy. Not bad, Bobby. Where to next? Detroit or Chicago? Um, what do we want? Let's see. Personally, I've been to Chicago way more times than Detroit, so let's go to Detroit. The Detroit speech. The city of Detroit has not grown larger or more grand following the war. Many homes on the, on the way from the airport lay destitute or abandoned. The population of poor blacks that had, not, that had moved to the city scared away most of the wealthier whites. Crime was growing rampant, and the city had grown close to all-out anarchy on more than one occasion. Class inequality was still real here, and if Bobby Kennedy was going to get this crowd problem, he had to address it. Ladies and gentlemen of Detroit, I want to say that I am humbled by the warm welcome I received into your city. Detroit is a lovely place, with a deep history, great industry, and long-running institutions. That's something anyone can be proud of, however. It, like so many other cities in America, is polluted with a stain. A stain that runs deep and draws a line in the sand that mu all must obey. I, of course, speak of segregation. It ought to be possible for students of any color to attend any school so they choose. Without military support, it ought to be possible for customers of any color to buy this, any service they so choose. Without demonstrating in the street. It ought to be possible, I think, for people of any color to choose whichever seat they please on the bus, without fear of giving it up. It ought to be possible, I think, for any American to enjoy the privileges of being an American without regard to the race or color. As such, I will not bow down to those who would wish for the separation of the races, for if they are separate, they are not equal. Kennedy stepped down off the stage around a round of furious applause going up behind him. Not bad, he said to Hubert Humphrey, who had given him his own speech not five minutes ago. Humphrey nodded. Where to next? Denver? Yellowstone. Um, I don't know. What, hmm. Yellowstone would be nice. Let's go to Denver. Let's go to Colorado. Why not? Let's try Colorado out. And, okay, so now, god dang, we got the Senate election. So if you want to read about this, please go ahead. We're going to go with MPP. I might go back and actually screw this up, too, and try to get as many MPP senators as possible, but we'll see. Because I do want to have a good, mm -mm, spoiler alert, Harrington run. Japan was issue. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. God dang, what? Did they win the issue? 
Rocky Mountain High. Denver, Colorado was one of the fastest growing cities in America in the past 15 years. Its population increased by nearly a quarter. To the dismay of many less welcoming Americans, it increased in a manner disagreeable to them, with many of the new residents being of the Latino persuasion. The Chicano movement had a strong foothold here and could provide a strong foothold for the progressives in Colorado. On the steps of the state capitol, President Kennedy stood before thousands of people, speech in hand. People of Denver and all my fellow Americans have come today not to give a speech of fancy terminology, but to state a fact. At the core of American society, there is a disease, an inborn illness that we willingly accept as a social norm. When it's clear to see that it weakens us terribly, I, of course, speak of the policies of segregation and state-sponsored racism. I see people of different colors and creeds standing here before me today. White, black, Hispanic, and Asian. To all those affected by racism, I say that your fight is not forgotten. Civil rights is not limited just to the African-American communities. It extends to all peoples of all colors who have been discriminated against by our twisted system. There are many individuals who have had to remind us of that. In particular, I would say Cesar Chavez, a man who, to whom I owe a great deal of respect. There are, of course, countless others who have contributed to the struggle. However, the struggle itself is not over. So we must stand together, regardless of color, and demand that we be judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. I and my friends among the progressives will assure that such righteous demands do not fall upon deaf ears. Thank you. After another hour of on and off speaking and shaking hands, Robert Kennedy got back onto the jet black Lincoln Continental and served as the head of the presidential motorcade. He turned to Hubert Humphrey, who sat beside him. That took a bit longer than expected. I decided we're going to Washington next. Seattle, specifically. Diverse place, replied Humphrey. You've been winging most of these speeches so far. What are you going to talk about? About civil rights? Why stop now? Labor unions could use some help there. Um, hmm. Civil rights. Let's go with labor unions for now. I don't want to grow any more. I don't want to divide the party too hard. But, hmm. Uh, I'll do civil rights. That's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here for. Alright, so that one do. Very nice, very nice. Rally the Austral Australasians or Australians. I could keep doing it this way too, but. Uh, and that would help us with our popularity. And yeah, that would help for the popularity in the elections. I don't know if we'll be able to get through all the stuff first. Because we need to get, like, all of one side, all here. That actually might help. Screw it, we're going to go domestic. Uh, uh, I, we need to actually 100 political power now, though. But I got to think about the next election as well. But domestic prep preparedness. Hmm. Hmm. For elections. I mean, we'll have another set of elections. There's probably, honestly, not much we can really do in elections with with who I'm thinking we're going to get next. Mandatory naval training. The purpose of the U.S. Navy isn't to just move troops from point A to point B. It's not just a series of carriers for our planes. No, the Navy is a powerful 200 diplomatic arsenal. It's a cannon that will fire the Marine Corps at Sukarno and keep the Japanese at arm's length. We'll conduct emergency naval exercises to prepare the U.S. to starve Sukarno. Not only that, we'll prepare ships to deploy our forces on a moment's notice. Sukarno has no idea what he's in for. And the IJM will be well advised to stay out of the South Pacific while we operate. Yeah, my bad. It just it is what it is. A city united. Yellowstone was an interesting and unusual place to hold a speech. Initially, President Bobby Kennedy had been skeptical to, to traveling to a remote, albeit famous, national park for one of his speeches across America. Now, however, with reporters from dozens of major news networks standing before him, no pads in hand, he knew that he had been wrong. This would not be a speech for Wyoming, nor Montana, or Idaho, or any other state. This would be a patriotic rallying cry to all America, reminding us where we all come from and what we all call home. Today, I find myself not speaking to the common people of the U.S., but rather the messengers to whom they listen. That does not matter. I stand here, and one of the most beautiful, peaceful places our na great nation has to offer. To say that no matter how divided we may seem, we are still an indivisible union, connected through soulful bonds that may never be torn apart. Every year, millions of people visit this place. As such, it remains, and forever shall be, remain one of the greatest bonds that tie our nation together. We are a nation of one people, of one heritage. Regardless of race, of color, or creed, we are not simply Americans. We are America itself. Standing in such a place as this, we may be reminded of the words of our forebearer, John Winthrop, to his shipmates aboard the Arabella, as we were traveling to the new world for new life. We must always remember, he said, that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us, today as always. The eyes of all people remain upon us, anxiously studying the American experiment. Be it through our politics or culture or faith, in all levels of government, we must be constructed of men and women of resolute strength, aware of the trust placed in them by God and the freedom-loving peoples of the world. Our endeavors, as with the men of Arabella's endeavors, will not be judged upon the basis of the color of our skin, nor the nature of our God, nor the ideology to which we owe allegiance. Rather, we will be judged by the world we build for future generations, be terrible or righteous. An hour or so later, one supporter had asked questions in the futurist and shaken president's hand. Bobby Kennedy returned to the Lincoln Continental he'd been driving to Yellowstone Inn. Um, I don't think I read this one, right? It uh, basically said, we're going to go to Washington, Seattle. What are you going to talk about? Civil rights? D uh, what's up now? Labor unions could use some... Where are we supposed to get that one? Where are we? Huh. Actually, can you get any more PP yet from a CIA mission? No. I'll go down it for so. That's fine. Alright. Not bad. We're literally just here to kill them all off. A dinner in Seattle. 
Uh, the restaurant fills had a fancier aura than the name would have suggested, of course. Half the place had been reserved ahead of time for the president and his entourage of secret service and politicians. President Kennedy himself sat in a cozy little corner table with Hubert Humphrey, eating a steak after a long day of pleasantries and, of course, speeches. Uh, with all things considered, said Robert Kennedy, cutting a piece of filet mignon, I'd say that went pretty darn well. I'm not sure how poorly it could have gone in the first place, considering how well we poll here, but every single talking point hit the nail on the head. The people out there loved every minute of the speech. Sure, replied Humphrey. I think that we all said out there we should help us a bit here in Washington. At least prevent us from losing the state as a whole. So what's next after we finish this nice little dinner? We got the rest of the West Coast to cover. I was thinking California, Oregon, uh, California and Ports. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably... I don't think... I probably chose that one last. Let's go to Oregon. Does anyone remember Oregon? Yeah, I probably remember what they hear about in the news, but... Oh, crap. Uh, this is... Yeah, trying to get both. I might just use cons commands. I've already used cons commands earlier. I might just use cons commands for the future for this one. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Portlandia. RFK had come to Portland after quite a fashion of speeches across America, so it was no surprise to find a large crowd of expectant faces waiting him at Mount Tabor Park. These people lived right on the doorstep of the Japanese sports of the Pacific Ocean, and were obviously eager, anticipating some anti-Japanese rhetoric. Bobby Kennedy shuffled his papers on the podium, and uh, to began to speak. People of Portland, I see among you many expectant faces, of course. The West Coast has faced the greatest and most troubling humiliation and anger from the Japanese treaty ports brought on by the now avoid Akagi Accords. Many of your industrial sectors are also under duress, and with such difficult times upon us recently. It's no wonder that the main line of American politicians have failed you in leadership. I can promise you that with the NPP at your side, the city of Portland, the state of Oregon, and the entirety of the West Coast will be brought out from these difficult times, unsullied by pain or scarred by poverty. Can he continue with and without a speech with notes, simply giving a run-of-the-mill speech to please the overall masses? These past few weeks must have been heck on the, his riders, and the most recent ones really need to uh, spice it up. In any case, the people seem to love it, as they always have. After another hour or so of off-and-on speeches in uh, Mount Tabor, Bobby once again hoped, hopped back into his black continental, Lincoln Continental of the presidential motorcade with the Vice President Humphrey alongside him. Well, began Humphrey, we couldn't... Gonna go along the West Coast without hitting California, now could we? No, we couldn't, Hugh, replied Kennedy. I've got two drafts for a speech in San Francisco. I think we'll be focused on the one on... Civil rights! Okay, yeah, why not? Nothing but civil rights here, my boys. So let them fail, and then now we're gonna attack. The California ports. When you were standing up on the stage and just outright called the Japanese ports a criminal, illegal occupation of American soil, I just thought about the world stood up for a moment. Bobby Kennedy smiled as VP. Humphrey Hubert, or... Hubert, no. Hubert Humphrey, from across her dinner table. Still can't believe any politician would say something like that, huh? I'm hardly f f the first to spit on the Kage Accords. Well, it just so happens far between, few and far between, is all. Saying that you got a lot of support anyhow. I'm not sure I've ever seen a crowd erupt like that. They loved you, Bobby. Kitty looked took another bite and slice out of his steak. Eating while talking. Yeah, well, he said, I guess that means a little venture here was a success. Next, we're heading to Texas. Um, glass houses. Oh, he's going to get... Ooh. Hmm. Alabama. Ah, well, let's go big or go home, right? Begin the blockade. The American people will not accept another South Africa. They do not want a long, protracted conflict that leads to horrible images on TV. They need not worry. We'll make sure Sakaro doesn't last long enough for us to get sick of fighting him. It's time to start the beast. We'll cut off Japan from Indonesia. The U.S. then will surround the East Indies, securing our supply lines and crippling Sakarnos. Our training will go a long way to making our Navy able to win the new Pacific conflict. Our Navy will be on the higher alert to stop any and all threats to Hata's liberation struggle. I just want to get more political power there. That's literally the only reason why we're doing it. Because we need it. Uh, freedom Fighters. I don't want to get the Civi. That's even more PP though. Um, eh. That's even more PP here too. Lower RD support. I mean, it's an election year, so... I don't want to get too far with this stuff. And this does raise everything here. So after this one, we're probably just going to do political preparedness or domestic preparedness. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. As well as all the stuff down here too. Cool. Thank you. And since we're here, anyways, get some more artillery. It does lower organization, but it just gives us so much more, uh, just so much more to use here. There you go. Glass houses. Bobby Kennedy delay reclined on his bed in what must have been the most expensive and lavish hotel rooms he'd ever seen. It had everything: a full bathroom bigger than some inner city apartments, a king size feather bed, father, feather bed, radio, mini fridge, and even a TV. Unfortunately, the TV only had a few channels, so Bobby chose the news as background noise while he read about the latest developments in Europe. Regardless, after a long day of giving fiery speeches in Montgomery, Alabama, it was nice to relax for a few minutes. It was quite the miracle he'd been uh, had the TV turned up at all. As he heard his name, said, intrigued, Bobby increased the volume over. 
Governor Wallace claimed President Kennedy came to Alabama this week only to slander him in the entire state of Alabama. Wallace said that he had, been, he had served the state of Alabama faithfully for many years and would not let a Yankee upstart with no political experience tell him or his constituents how to live or run themselves. He also said Kennedy is trying to break the unity of the NPP in the state of Alabama. Bobby turned off the TV, his lips curling into a frown. He expected and hoped for an outcome like this. This was just the opportunity to kick Wallace down a couple of notches. If Wallace wanted to play ball, he'd soon learn a simple truth. He's now a catcher in the house of glass. Honestly, you guys can just hold here. Just don't die. Oh, there you go. Strike one, you're out. Well said, Hubert Humphrey, lighting cigar. Today could have gone a lot better. Bob McKinney, the item with some annoyance. When we walked out of those hotel doors, I just expected press. Just never expected Wallace to be standing there with them, ready to talk over and humiliate you. Bobby nodded. He looked out over the city of Knoxville, Tennessee, where they stopped for the night. The window on the hotel balcony stood. they stood on was strong, but almost balmy. It would have been perfect had it not been for the day's events. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Every time I opened my mouth, he would scream over me. Made me look like a gosh darn fool. I've already gotten calls from three party members, all from different wings. They asked me what the heck happened. I know, said Humphrey. It's a rough business, especially when dealing with an animal like Wallace. Bobby sighed, watching the distant flashing light of an airplane as it suddenly moved across the night sky. It disappeared into the clouds only after moments. Hugh, said Bobby, I've had enough. Let's go home. Nice. Uh, I can spend more, why not? Yeah, I might just use Consequence to get Italy with us. Uh, at this point, like... Just... Because I want to do this stuff too, upcoming elections. Oh, yeah. Forgot about this stuff. Yeah, I might just... I don't know, we'll see. I really don't know yet. Hey, it's all campaign. Nice, nice job, guys. Nice job. Got more PP. Let's do domestic preparedness, too. Hey, they crash and burn. Nice. That's actually really good for us. Anything up here yet? Nope. Hey, that's not in circle. God dang it. Um. Palambang. The goal is just to weaken them as much as humanly possible. All right, not bad. This is my two. Keep going, keep going. Oh, hello. Uh, ah, there we have all this stuff too. Um, probably the Rockies. That might be good to do. There you go. Oh, we have some more divisions. Oh, we actually have another helicopter division. Finally, there you go. Have fun. Yeah, look at all that. Honestly, you could probably cut down the construction spending some more too right now too. But I think we're okay. We're okay for now. America wins the issue. Look at that. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Yay. Nice. Domestic preparedness is very good as well. Fire up the people. It's not bad. Feed the beasts. Oh, there we go. If you want to buy this one, please go ahead. Boom. And boom. Because we get more political power that way. But after that one, then we'll go and do the war on poverty. So, I think I read this one earlier. So, yeah. You can read that one too, if you like. Domestic preparedness. If you want to buy this, please go right ahead. I've read this once as well, or twice. Military, military of military at any cost will drown our enemies in raw industrial might. I like that one more. Yes, please. Oh, these guys are coming up again. That's not good. Uh, where are our guys? Um... Just go down here. Just at this point, you could probably just blow them all the heck. In here, naval liaison. Now we're okay. Uh, you go right there and do that. Bowls are updated. All right. Cool. And let's see. Popularity decreases. Increase our influence. That'll be good. Do that one. There you go. There we go. And go up this way, too. Get them getting another port is really bad for us, so. You should be able to win there pretty easily. Nice. Not bad. I mean, sending Marines on here is not a bad idea. Wait, what? A loss of opportunity? What do you mean? What? What? What do you mean? We had all this stuff done. If you want to buy this, please go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and, uh... Fix this up because we can't uh, we can't have this. So I'll be right back. The war on poverty. 
How can America be called the greatest nation in the world when millions of our citizens drown in abject squalor? Across the nation, children starve, workers are paid a pittance, whole communities slip through the cracks. It's imperative that we break the cycle of poverty and lift our poor and dispose out of that dark abyss. It's our duty as rulers, as fellow Americans, to ensure that all of our people can rise out of poverty and be provided with opportunities they need to pursue happiness. On his journeys across America, President Kennedy has seen poverty as no other politician has. Children starving in Mississippi, farm workers treated like slaves in California, blacks across the South living in utter destitution. He saw it all in behind the proud faces of the men. He saw the shame, desperation, and resignation. He saw the emptiness in the children's eyes, eyes from which the light had long ago guttered out and thought of his own children. Those images of pain and degradation remained with him, consuming his waking thoughts, haunting his dreams. He knew they had to do something, for whatever he closed his eyes, he saw those dark, shrunken faces crying out for their savior. But Rome was not built in a day, the president knew to his eternal consternation that poverty was, like everything else, twisted into a political issue by the cruel vipers of Washington. The aid of Wallace and his cronies would be vital to the success of his first salvo of anti-poverty legislation, but would their support be worth the price? What's one more favor upon party brothers, a grow more unified, less liberal, and get more political power, or we're better off keeping our hands clean? Oh, no, things happen. Federal food banks, shall we? There's more than enough food in a country to feed the people, but there are many who simply cannot afford to feed themselves and their families. While these people struggle just to get enough to sustain them through the day, it's also impossible for them to spend any time trying to improve themselves. We must establish food banks to provide for the most destitute among us, so that they might have a chance of pulling themselves out of poverty. We can source donations of food from generous Americans and grant federal funding to buy out uh, excess stock from short stores and supply centers, ultimately. We must ensure that nobody goes to bed on an empty stomach, as well as form the job's core. An old age paradox, one needs experience to find work, but one also needs work to get experience. Our youth know the struggle best of all, as, as they are forced into dead-end jobs that provide no room for self-improvement. We shall establish an organization that will offer training and work experience for young adults across the country. Not only will this improve the career prospects of our young workforce, it will also fill the market with a wealth of newly experienced laborers, which will provide a much-needed boost to our local economies. Affordable Housing Act. Uh, we might try that, but I already did Feed the Beast. Pump the gas, that's okay. Factory output's not too bad. Pass the bill through Congress. Fun, fun skunk works. I like that one, but eyes on the port's not too bad. But I like saving this one for later, so. Uh, we'll do cogs in the machine. The government has extensive powers over private industries in the case of national emergencies. With a bit of creative interpretation of these laws, we can encourage the heavily industries to optimize their production lines for our political or potential wartime needs. Like a scout, an American should always be prepared. Our position secured. Today, after months of hard fighting across the archipelago, the Indonesian civil war has come to an end. As loyalists forced to surrender in droves, and Sukarno's top generals firmly declare the fight over. With Sukarno out, the popular front of the free Indonesia has taken power, comprised of anti Sukarno Republicans, oppressed ethnic groups, communists, and Islamists. This ragtag army proved too strong for the loyalist forces already. A democratic government is being set up in Jakarta, with much of the former rebel leaders taking up leadership positions, with a victory for Indonesia. The administration of Robert F. Kennedy has seen a noticeable increase in popular approval, having promised to defeat Sukarno in the triumph of democracy. The President's promise appears to become a reality. Exactly to what degree the U.S.'s support affected the Indonesian Civil War remains a matter of debate, but for now, America seems happy to, to see a favorable conclusion to the war. The jungle finally cools as we get more political power. The focus sheet might change. American society grows slightly more unified, which is pretty good overall. And the MPP grows more popular. Also, I didn't address any of the comments yet, so here we go. Uh, how do you release African states? Successfully release them? Um, I just let them just all die. Just uh, That's pretty much it. These guys break away. If we just let the mandate expire, obviously we get these nations out. Um, to play them successfully is pretty much impossible, uh, just because it's incredibly bugged right now. Other comments included, hopefully nothing bad happens to Mr. RFK. Hopefully not. Someone said we should have kept the, the South African war going. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure about that, but uh, someone says we should name Greenland to East Alaska, which I'm 100% in favor of. This should be a, a state, another state of us. And then someone says we should do more Thousand Week Reich. Italy joins the free world. Italian-American communities across the U.S. erupted in celebration today as Italy officially signed legislation and joined the Organization of Free Nations as a member. Despite immense Japanese pressure, with this move, the Italian people have struck a valiant blow to the OFN's efforts to contain the dual menaces of the Unity Pact and the Japanese call of prosperity sphere. The OFN has gained an important foothold in Europe, access to the Suez Canal, and access to some of the world's largest oil reserves in the Middle East. While the Cold War is so far from won, there is still widespread feeling among the population that many things are finally looking, maybe finally looking up for the forces of the free world. Another shining light in a sea of darkness. The free world just got bigger. Hopefully they actually did, because I just got the event saying that they didn't. But apparently they did. Look at that. That's actually really nice. They even have Romania, Hungary, of course these guys over here in Bulgaria. Jeez Louise, that's really nice, man. That's real nice. And we still have 155. Look at where we ended up. And without using any sort of uh, PP cheats. Actually, I already did the one that gave us more support for the standard MPP. So that's why we're kind of down a little bit more from um, political power. But that's okay. I'm actually really happy about that. Fight against poverty. We gotta do that one. Uh, it's an election year, though. Mm, what if 
we get killed off after the elections. So maybe we'll wait to do this one. I don't want to be. I don't want the RDs to do better. I really don't. We'll be seeing more liberal, which is fine. We do get some more support from unions and his radical support base. Well, let's do that one first because it doesn't improve the RDs, and we get more support. And then industrial expertise. It's maybe not the greatest thing that we could have, but still not bad. Peace has been brought to Vietnam. Polls are updated. That's very nice. Not sure how that's going. Oh, we can campaign. All right. So where are we at? Uh, let's just do. Ooh, the Great Lakes. Democratic Party. Southwest. Is Southwest? Yes, it's your Southwest. Alright, not bad. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. And I did spend uh, some of the money we had here in the reserves and cut down some of the debt. I figured we, we're we going to keep more. We're going to do better, 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 better here. So, And all we're doing is building air bases anyway, so it doesn't even really matter. I don't think I've missed any place here, really. Yeah, it's all zero, 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 zero. Obviously, I want to get Hawaii back. We'll see what happens. Also, I did do... Uh, if you want to go that, please go ahead. We open up to the queers. Thank you very much. If you want to buy pump the gas, I already did this one, so it is what it is. Cool. But keep spending for this one. That's going to give us more PP. I have a form of the job core. Let's go ahead and try to do what else? The ports of the poor. Affordable housing act. Um, I do want to keep going down this way because I do want to set us up for Harrington. I think he's MPP, right? So I think what we're going to do, let's get everything done first and get through the election. See what we have, and then go extreme liberal. Extreme liberal. Rosie the radio operator. If you wonder about this one, please go right ahead. I've read this one before, so. The president will attempt to pass this bill through Congress. That might go well. It might not. We're going to need some peepee -pee for this. Oh, good. A middling campaign in New England? That seems pretty good for us, so. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Rosie the radio operator. Open the door to opportunity. So many Americans spend their lives slandering in poverty, despair to better this situation, but lacking the resources to make it happen today. Too many, of course. If we if we are to lift them out of poverty, we need to help them develop the skills and attributes to find gainful employment, training they otherwise would never be able to afford. The solution, the job score. A new program run by the Department of Labor aimed at providing young low-income Americans with free vocational training to improve their quality of life by giving them the skills they need to better their own socioeconomic standing. With the advent of the job score, we'll be able to show America's indig indigent millions a path out of the darkness of poverty, or a brighter future awaits whoever is willing to make it theirs. A brighter day dawns. Very cool. And after this one, yeah, let's just get through the elections, which, after this one, we should be able to do. Um, fun the skunk for us, not bad. Uh, we might not be able to pass too much, but really, after this one's done, it'll basically be time to uh, keep going. Build a safety net, that's too much cost for now. <laughs> oh, that's meant for the people. Capitol Hill, by necessity, knows more about the true state of the Union than its own people. However, it's not omniscient. The knowledge with which it bases its policies relies on a complicated hierarchy of departments, agencies, and offices. All of them are staffed with normal employees and managers, and humans can err and possess their own agendas, as Nixon can attest. President Kennedy's ambitious road trip provides us an opportunity to learn more about America's people's plight than tabulation sheets process in D.C., thus giving our planners more information for the administration's reforms. Additionally, it allows us to offer them the government's tangible presence to reach out and sewage their worries of being left un yet unheard yet again. Nice. Work with oh, dealing with the far. Oh, we got this one back. Okay. Well, work with the Republicans. Oh. Oh, okay. So all of the center. So how many do we have? Okay, the far right. Even the far right's like, yeah, let's do this. Women's Act? The far right loves women. Don't ever let anyone else tell you anything different. They love women. So now that's uh, 9 plus that 28. 28 plus 36. That's why I don't like either party. Or any party here. Oh, uh, I guess... Actually, who can we do next? Oh, Southwest is pretty bad. Great Lakes is pretty bad. Oh, it's looking pretty bad for us. Upper South? Yeah, I'll do Upper South. Screw it. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Yay! Rosie the Riveter. A woman's right to serve. Oh, look at that. Oh, the uh, NPP grows a little more unified. So, after securing its passage in the Senate through a bipartisan coalition, President Kennedy signed the Women's Occupational Military Equality and Normalization Act. To resounding applause, the act bars the armed forces from discriminating against potential recruits on the basis of sex. This grants women the legal right to serve in all non-combative military occupations. Upon signing the act, Kennedy remarked, For far too long, not every individual has had an equal opportunity to serve the country in the military. The struggle for liberty affects all people of the world, regardless of their sex, and it's a profound injustice to deny half of our people the right to support the fight to defend the free world. By signing this act, I affirm that we must recognize the full human equality of all of our people before God, before the law and the councils of government. We must do this not because it is militarily advantageous, though, although it is, not because of the laws of God command it, although they do, nor even because many wish, wish it so. We must do it for the single and fundamental reason that it is the right thing to do. Cheers to our fighting girls. Hey, nice. And Affordable Housing Act? Um... You know, I want to wait. That's that's very that's a little more progressive. So, like I said, I want to wait and uh, 
I just want to make sure we get the ports back. I want to get the ports back. That would be good to do. I'm not sure we can do this stuff. Ooh, by the time this is done, though, we're doing this one first, of course. But ah, Sorry, I'm sorry I'm, I'm very indecisive here. I just want to get a lot of things done, man. I really do. I really do. And we're going to do the fight against poverty next, probably. Um, the poorest of the poor. Let's see, the power of a handshake. Simple gestures leave immeasurable impacts on one's interactions with others. A handshake takes its place among the most important in American culture by firmly clasping the hand of another, then shaking it firmly, both establish either status as the other's peer. With a simple handshake, a man announces to, the, to another his good intentions, his respect for the dignity, and his belief in the equal standing, which, perhaps, explains why capitals, captains of industry seem never to seem to shake the hands of the workers they employ. Reaching out to this country is twice a bit and requires actively pursuing and establishing good faith in its part. If we aim to bridge the crevices of American society, then the government must take the first steps towards building the path to cross them for the president. The magnitudinous or magnitudinous task before him begins with a simple handshake. We need more pee, -pee man. We gotta get as much pee, pee as possible. Oh my goodness, and the election's probably done by now. Where are we at? Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh, oh look at that! The center actually got nine? The far right stay the same. The center got nine. Of course, it does help if you win the Indonesian war. The Republican... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We have 45 center MPP. Even after passing civil rights. Not bad. The RDs ain't looking too good. So now it's time to go extreme progressive. The Affordable Housing Act. To Americans, a house is not simply a refuge from the elements, a shelter providing warmth, or... A storehouse for the prized possessions. A house is their castle within which they may most feel most secure than anything anywhere else on earth. A house is their domain, its halls, walls marking the bounds whereupon their word is absolute law. A house is their symbol, and it is as they declare to the world that they are free men, beholden to none but the government. Ship an American of his house, and becomes little more than a slave. What does it say to today's America that, that then... Then, that most of its citizens do not have the money to buy a house of their own. The party center has long been aware of this problem, and drafted a bill designed to encourage the construction of affordable housing projects in America's booming cities. Soon every American will own a castle, but that is in the far, far future. We can say I content ourselves for having guaranteed that future as soon as President Kennedy signs it into law. The nomination of Thurgood Marshall. In a press conference that has dominated headlines across the country today, President F. Or F. President R. F. Kennedy has announced that Thurgood Marshall, currently a judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, will be nominated to the newly vacant seat on the Supreme Court. Marshall, a graduate of Harvard Law, or Howard Law School, and an experienced civil rights litigator, will be the first African American to serve on the highest court in the land. His appointment would surely mark a turning point in American history. However, some of the Congress are not so willing to see such a point turn in the first place. Many senators come from the South and are directly reliant on white voter blocks, who are well disposed towards putting a black man on the Supreme Court. Several members of the Senate have already put out statements to the press expressing their firm opposition, although nobody has come out and said that it would be due to Marshall's race instead. The releases mentioned the dangers of liberal judicial activism and other such phrases. Clearly, the appointment of Thurgood Marshall will be a political fight for the ages. The right thing, the right time, the right man, the right place? I hope. Confirmed by the Senate, the vote will be held in 15 days? Uh, I mean, we just... I mean... All of the center... 12 out of 13 Republicans. So thanks for voting this time, Republicans. When I tried this off-screen getting the Civil Rights Act passed, you didn't want to do jack squat. Anyways, 18 plus 45, 18, 22, that is, 22 plus 45 is 60, some, 7. Yeah, I can add. Cool. Campaign where we have it. The Senate goes more popular. Um, oh, We're going to go poverty. We're going extreme poverty, man. We're going extreme here. And they'll do the power of a handshake. And you know what? We can also the trench of poverty speech. Why is it that in America, stretching from Atlantic to Pacific, with all the resources that owning most from a continent will provide, still have a class of people mired in absolute poverty? Why is it in a nation that makes many times more food in the richest farmlands on the planet, still have people starving? Why is it that in a country with the grandest skyscrapers and all the land to build and grow communities, still have tens of thousands of homeless people? Why is it in a nation with the best schools and hospitals that even our enemy leaders send their children to study in or have their cancers cured, have illiteracy at all, or have millions dying in pain and misery? The simple fact is that for far too long we've expected every American lift themselves up to climb up and out of the deep trench of poverty by their own merits, strengths, and abilities that join the American dream that we all share. That system, which we call a meritocracy and take such pride in, has a great flaw, though. There are some who, who, people who, no matter how hard they work, how hard they struggle, how, mu how hard they save, how much careful, or how careful they are with their health, are stuck by the misfortunes of fate and are cast down to that pit of despair, unable to scramble out. In the White House, I receive stories like these every day via letter and telegram, as I visit every state and city and county. And it's heartbreaking to want to help those people that, through little or no fault of their own, have been pushed into the trench of poverty. So, instead, I say, let's help those that need it. Everyone in that deep, dark hole that they are dumped into. Those that are sick, we should heal. Those that have been maimed, we should lift up. Those that are homeless, we should shelter. Those that are scraping by, we should give a helping hand. That is the goal of Social, Se social Security. Providing a baseline of support for those that need it. Giving every American a chance to live that dream. To reach out a hand, to hand down a ladder. To pull up everyone from the trench of poverty. More security for the fam American family. 
Very good. On to Tokyo would be very nice. Obviously, we get some political power doing that too, but we oh, 0.93 ain't enough, man. I want to fight for schools and workers, but um, we'll see. Let's see down here. Not bad for. Obviously, not as good as Jumbos would be, but whatever. Anything else here yet? Not really. We got to save for PP. So. Uh, since we can't do it anyways, you might as well cut it down for now. And, alright. Balls are updated. Ace confirmed. A man once declared, you do what you do what you think is right and let the law catch up. Well, now, still the most important judicial institution in the U.S. And decides to vote in the Senate today, Thurgood Marshall is confirmed as the newest Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Marshall will be the first African American to serve on the court, and his confirmation is undoubtedly a victory for the civil rights movement, which he himself has worked tirelessly to advocate. During his confirmation hearing, a number of conservative senators railed against judicial activism and made a variety of statements that many commentators have called little better than dog whistles. Some even asked whether or not Marshall had ties to American Bolsheviks. This strategy failed, however. At a press conference today, Justice Marshall stated his gratitude to the Senate and to the people of America before posting their pictures with his two sons and wife, the civil rights activist Cecilia Suyat Marshall. It's truly a historic moment for the nation, representing the triumphs of justice over institutional racism. Let's hope so anyways. There's a chance we'll get the prep event, though. That's a chance. Small chance. But still a chance. Diplomatic Arena. Don't really care yet. Ah, uh, yes. We need some more PP. Thank you. Thank you, CIA. We could recruit more guys, but I don't really care, to be honest. A day for tears. It's with a heavy heart today that I announced at 9.35 a.m. Walt Disney died of lung cancer at St. Joseph Hospital in Burbank, California. He was 65 and survived by his wife Lillian, two daughters Sharon and Diane, and a multi-million dollar empire of joy. Open joy! If you want to continue reading about this, please go ahead. I've read that one like three or four times, so it is what it is. I apologize that I, you know, don't read a lot of these, but after reading them like once or twice, it's kind of like, oh well, yeah, I understand. And we'll do the power of the handshake too. Um, a specter of hunger. Ooh, that'd be good to get done as well. Yeah. Um, this one. Include poverty reforms will lead to a moderate increase in quality of life. All right. Not bad, not bad. But the power of a handshake. Oh, look at this. Something's happening here. Alright, so how are we going to look? We'll attempt to pass a bill through here, right? No? Yes? Maybe? Focus on fuel? No, working? Okay, okay, well, whatever. And the ports of the poor? Let's do that one. In New York, Chicago, and San Francisco, and a hundred other cities, fading, faded posters of smiling families in sunny days bestrew the grimy brick walls marking the seedier parts of town. Cloistered houses, arranged in haphazard patches, dwell under the shadow of glamorous and ritzy skyscrapers. Its inhabitants amble from work to home and work again, thoughts filled with worries over rent and food and bills, but not, and nothing but. They have no pride, no hope, no future beyond the 30 days they have left to pay for their right to live. My apologies for this. Gotta do that real quick. These are the downtrodden of America. There are countless tired and poor who hang their heads low while its few fortune hold theirs high. This country cannot move forward as one without it slowly. How fortunate it is then that their new government attends to them before all else. The Far Eastern Republic calls. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. We too saw, shall send well wishes to their nation. Cool. Nice. How do we get 15 billion again? So much. Um, we're going to do poverty. I'm going to max it out. Academic base is nice and all. Workers are nice. But it, the poverty is is a disease. More liberal? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, MPP. So how, how, how liberal are we? That's my question. Which hand is shake, of course, though. We have radical ra civil rights legislation. Italy in the open does help us quite a bit, though. Engines of war... Um, let's go and do this one, too. The President and his allies have been stumping around the nation for weeks now, rallying support for his expansive Social Security program and slowly moving the needle in favor of his proposals. Each speech, from the big auditoriums to the cities to the small stages of county fairs, convinced more and more people that the plan, while big and bold, will undoubtedly help millions of Americans that need it. In Cleveland, Ohio, as Bobby Kennedy climbs off the stage after giving another speech at the public auditorium, he is greeted by a huge crowd of supporters and well-wishers, as Secret Service agents keep out a nervous eye. Aides hurry up to follow the president, and news photographers and reporters from local newspapers and from the Associated Press hustle up to get a good shot as he begins the glad hand of the crowd. It was the later, the, the later group that Bobby was most concerned about, as the pictures that they took would be printed in newspapers around the country. Therefore, even before he walked out on stage to give a speech, he was discussing with advisors what to do when he was done. It was important to that he got the right look, the right message across on who would be, uh, who would shake hands first with. Undoubtedly, the most 
likely image would be seen tomorrow morning from coast to coast. As she did she shake hands with a man in the crowd with that far-right MPP button pinned to his chest, an average Joe to show that he was willing to work with his entire party, or perhaps the head of the Cleveland chapter of the NAACP to show the strong bond that RFK has with the African-American community. Or maybe the head of the typ typographical workers' union, Local 53, which is one of the oldest unions in the city to show solidarity with the working class. It had been in the back of the president's mind from the moment he started his speech, and now with fractions of a second to think, he stretches his hand out to think. History will judge the government by how they support the poor and hopeless. Helpless. President Local NAACP branch, head of the typographical workers' union. We got us to be seen as more liberal, a church in Fairfield. Um, if you're wondering about this, please go right ahead. I thought uh, before, probably so. Cool. Awesome. The poorest of the poor. Suspect of hunger. I definitely want to get this one done before Kennedy might disappear. I'll well, be wondering about that. Please go right ahead, too. What good does owning the richest farmland in the world do if you cannot feed your people with it? Despite having more food than the world as people, Americans still show up on, along sidewalks clutching at their stomachs. Americans in their cities and towns still loiter around diners, malls, and restaurants begging for scraps and leftovers as hoping for good Samaritans to come their way. This is a stark naked truth. America's bounty is locked behind a rich man's window pane, and its penniless can only stare at the sustenance denied to them from the harsh outside. Progress for America means progress for all of its citizens, its most vulnerable most of all. We must lift them up to a better lot in life by any means necessary. But before anything else, we must approach them with our good intentions. If nothing else, they must know that no American will ever go hungry at present. Kennedy gets his way. And right now, we are at a six. That's not bad. That ain't too bad, man. I'll be honest, that ain't too bad. All right, my friends, and then... Oh, military assertive. Yeah, I ain't got that one. That's fine. Request embassy. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Oh, wait, this is Valerie Soblin still here. Is supporting warlords, no matter how idealistic? We'll accept emissaries from him immediately. Why not? Why not? And let's go and do the Spectre of Hunger. Followed up with the ending with what? The bitterest of the bitter. The American worker struggles one of small victories eked out from their titanic sacrifice. Noxious smoke, searing heat, and blistered feet for 14 hours a day, often more. Bruises and dead bodies littering factory yards while hired thugs protect processed machines from valueless men. Fair compensation and fair pay say the picket lines as brave men and women stare bar ho barrel holes of tense firing lines. The government's answer, at long last but only after, not before, the inevitable massacre. The workers' memories long and in their history ugly as red blood... As blood red as the flags they wave. Reaching out to this country's many scorn requires acknowledgement from those who had ignored it, and we, like their government, are to them the worst kind of ignorant. President Kennedy can only appeal to their last bit of hope and promise them that the blood they had shed shall not be in vain. But if you enjoyed today's video, in which we're setting ourselves up to be very, very not assassinated in the next episode, will hopefully go very well. But if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we do have 1% support for Mr. Yaki. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.